Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. Guess what? My name is Graham Elwood. You are all political vigilantes that are out there making Gotham great again. One of the great ways to support this show is go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can submit articles like this one that was submitted by Patreon member Nicholas M. Thompson. Nicholas, very much appreciate it, man. Um, this has happened a couple weeks ago. Uh, kids in 123 countries went on strike to protect the climate. Uh, we've talked about this in the past, but it, it bears repeating. It's kids, mainly high school kids, teenagers are out there just saying no. They're waking up to the fact that, you know, when they're in their 30s and 40s, this planet is going to be a, a post-apocalyptic nightmare if something doesn't happen right now. And the adults don't seem to be doing a damn thing about it. There's people like Diane Feinstein telling these kids, oh, this will never pass. Let me handle it. Which is just like... Well, it's such leadership. It's such leadership when Dianne Feinstein did that, right? And all the other leaders, oh, it's such leadership. When the Democrats say, oh, and stop with the purity tests. Oh, thank Yeah, that's such leadership. Because that's what JFK said, right? Remember when he said, it'll be too hard to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Like maybe in the 70s or 80s, we'll get somebody on the moon, but let's not get nuts here in the 60s. It's not realistic, you know? Rosa Parks, don't jump to the front of the bus. Just start like one row at a time. Incrementally, take a row, move up, one, like hang out for a couple years. Then, you know, you're not going to just change Jim Crow laws just by sitting on the front of a bus. I mean, come on, Rosa, let's not cause problems. That's what it's going to take. That's what Rosa Parks did. She just said no. This nice, polite, older woman just said no. As Chris Hedges says, it's going to take organized, peaceful, nonviolent resistance. An estimated 1.4 million young people in 123 countries skip school on Friday. So it's going to take guys walking out to demand stronger climate policies in what may be one of the largest environmental protests in history. Walked out of school on Friday around the planet. This movement had to happen. We didn't have a choice, wrote Swedish activist and strike leader Greta Thunberg with other young climate activists in The Guardian Friday. We knew there was a climate crisis. We knew because everything we read and watched screamed out to us that something was very wrong. You see, they, that generation like uh, under 30, but really also in their early 20s or teens, didn't grow up watching the corporate media the way people, I'm in my late 40s, my age group and older. So I just in the last couple of years have started to not watch the corporate media. So it's, it takes all of us in this age group or older to sort of deprogram ourselves from, oh, I thought the news was kind of telling the truth. They grow up on the internet. They grew up on their phones. They grew up getting more information via social media. Not all of it accurate, but they can get to the heart of a matter pretty quickly and get opposing views on something. Whereas we were just fed, this is what was, we didn't, you know, they would, people would talk about climate change, but then CNN and headline news and, you know, Fox, of course, well, well, I don't know. And they're still debating that bullshit. Those networks have average age of people like in their late 60s or 70s. So these kids grew up getting new, getting their own information. And they're like, oh, we're screwed. You want to know who this young woman is? Here she is. Our house is on fire. I am here to say our house is on fire. According to the IPCC, we are less than 12 years away from not being able to undo our mistakes. At places like Davos, people like to tell success stories. But their financial success has come with an unthinkable price tag. And on climate change, we have to acknowledge that we have failed. All political movements in their present form have done so. And the media has failed to create broad public awareness. But Homo sapiens have not yet failed. 
Yes, we are failing, but there is still time to turn everything around. We can still fix this. We still have everything in our own hands. Now is the time to speak clearly. Solving the climate crisis is the greatest and most complex challenge that Homo sapiens has ever, have ever faced. The main solution, however, is so simple that even a small child can understand it. We have to stop the emissions of greenhouse gases. And either we do that or we don't. You say nothing in life is black or white, but that is a lie, a very dangerous lie. Either we prevent a 1.5 degree of warming or we don't. Either we avoid setting off that irre irreversible chain reaction beyond human control or we don't. Either we choose to go on as a civilization or we don't. That is as black or white as it gets. We must change almost everything in our current societies. The bigger your carbon footprint is, the bigger your moral duty. The bigger your platform, the bigger your responsibility. Adults keep saying we owe it to the young people to give them hope. But I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to act as if you would in a crisis. I want you to act as if the house was on fire. Because it is. That is a badass. Kathy Griffin living in a $10 million house calling a young Muslim woman a fucking pussy for calling out Chelsea Clinton. You're not an activist. You're a rich white lady living in Hollywood privilege. That is a badass. That is an activist. That's who those young girls who aren't much younger than her, who went to Dianne Feinstein and Dianne Feinstein told them, shut up, I know what I'm doing. I'm a rich white lady who I'll be dead in 20 years. Who cares what happens to you in 20, 30 years? That's the kind of language that needs to be used. Not hope, not this incremental, the Green New Deal. I mean, it's too hard to pass. We don't, she just said it. It's black and white. Greenhouse emissions gotta go. They gotta go. That's it. The oil lobby's gonna fight you tooth and nail. So I say kids, Organize another walkout, but make it a week long around the planet. Get that number up to 1.4 billion kids around the planet. Just walk out. Keep walking out. Keep telling the adults and the parents, shut up and get it done. Make them afraid. All the older adults care about is money. Filthy, greedy money. That's all they care about. That's all the Trumps care about. That's all the Clintons care about. That's all the Obamas care about. They'll tell you, oh, that's, how dare you? Oh, really? Then show me with your actions. Eight years of Obama, did we have eight years of sweeping environmental reform? Did he say, by, in, by the end of the eight, I'm, I'm gonna, we're getting off of uh, oil. We're done. Did he say that in eight years? No. Because that's what Kennedy said at the beginning of, this, of his term. We're going to put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. And that's what somebody needs to say right now. By the end of the 2020s, we will have defeated climate change. That's what, that's what a leader is. Dianne Feinstein is not a leader. Pelosi's not a leader. Chuck Schumer's not a leader. Trump is a, just a, 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 a coked up tanning salon jackass. You know, I mean... Obama wasn't a leader. He gave great speeches. His, his tweets were polite, but that's not, a real leader says, uh-uh, this has to happen. The kids got it right. Rachel Maddow's not a leader. Sean Hannity's not a leader. And she called out the media. I love it. The bigger your platform, the bigger your responsibility. I don't have the big of a platform as CNN or MSNBC or Fox. I have a little bit of a platform. So it is my moral obligation to play this. 
And I thank Nicholas Thompson for turning me onto this article. And then I found the, that link, which was within the article. Here's what has to happen, guys. Keep fossil fuels in the ground. Phase out uh, subsidies for dirty energy production. Seriously invest in renewable and start asking difficult questions about how we structure our economies and who is set to win and who is set to lose. As they put it in the Guardian, they, and they have the backing of thousands of scientists who've signed letters of support. Find out where your local municipality divest. Have, have your local governments divest from fossil fuels. Have your banks, move your money out of banks that, it, that invest in fossil fuels. Move, them, move them, your money, your personal money. You might even like, oh, Graham, it's only a couple thousand bucks. Well, that adds up, man. Because look what happens when things, when everybody gets together. This adds up. This is from Sydney, Australia. Listen to our warning. Stop global warming. Vote for clean energy. Thanos had a better plan for the earth. <laughs> that one's hilarious. Vote for clean energy. The ocean is rising, so are we. Planet over profit. Look at all these kids. This is just in one town, Sydney, Australia. Oh, and look at them, all different ethnicities. Because they're going to have to build the brunt of this. This generation might be the last one. Thank you, Nicholas S. Thompson, or Nicholas M., sorry, for supporting the show. You can do that at patreon.com. You can send me these kind of stories because I'm one guy alone in his rent-controlled apartment because both parties, and namely Obama and Kamala Harris and those stole my condo, but I'm going to still do this. And I get to bring more information because you are all political vigilantes by helping this show any way that you can. Come see us on the road, Progressive Comedy Tour. We're coming to te Texas, April 12th through the 15th. And also I started... Uh, putting videos on rockfin.com. It's a new platform. It's sort of a combination of YouTube and um, Patreon. So for $10 a month, you get access to all the content creators on Rockfin. So there's martial artists, there's Ron Placones on there. And so I'm putting all of my videos on there from this point forward, um, ad-free. Plus the bonus ones I put on Patreon, I will also put those on Rockfin. So if your money's tight, supporting me on Patreon is a great way to support the show. Uh, but Rockfin um, has paid me a little bit of money to try to get their platform pushed up. I'm going to give it a shot. So Rockfin's helping support this show. If you think Rockfin is something for you, it's 10 bucks a month and you get access to all these videos. So all the videos I normally put on YouTube, I will put on Rockfin, but there's no ads. So if you don't want to watch my ads of my videos and get access to other content creators, you can go try them out. Try them out for a month or two. See if you like it. If you don't, no worries. Other great ways to support the show are um, follow me on social media, especially Twitter, at Graham Elwood. That's where I put all my politics. Every Sunday at 3 p.m. Pacific, we do a live stream. Join us for that. Like, subscribe, and share the videos. YouTube is unsubscribing people again. There's a lot of free ways to wipe your money's tight. I get that. Watch the ads. Let the ads play ahead of the videos. When you click skip ad, I don't get paid. And when you share it on your social media, it might not seem like a lot, but it is and it helps. Every little thing helps support the show so we can get the word out because we need a Green New Deal. Thanks for watching.